Now that's a very nice, polite golf clap, but we can do better than that. Aberdeen, make some noise for Joey Kramer! They were so polite about it, right? Welcome, sir. How are you? So nice to have you here. Keep it going for Joey Kramer! All right! There you go, sir. You are indeed. Welcome. So nice to meet you. Thank you so much. I always plan my Comic-Con outfits from my shoes. Testing, testing. Yeah. One, two. Thank you, Ross. He's gotcha. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Joey is here to answer your questions. I have a few questions of my own. But as you can see here, we've got microphones to the left and right. So please don't be shy. Come up and ask a question to Joey, and he will do his best to answer you. I will. I will do my absolute Canadian best. Yes. You're our second Canadian of the day. I don't know why they keep sending me the Canadians. I love it. Well, it's, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's a great country. Almost, what, second to Scotland, I guess? Is yeah. that what they say? See, you're playing to the right crowd. He said second to Scotland. Yes. First time in Aberdeen? It is, yeah. My first time in, in, uh, in Aberdeen, first time in Scotland. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I got to come to the UK last year, which was great. Uh, I've got some friends over here, and it's a great event so far. Yay. Having a great time. Yeah, it's wonderful. What differences are you noticing from Canada to the UK? Well, uh, actually, the weather is the same, yep. which uh, is nice. So I, I was told before I came over to dress warm and everything, but it's been it's been great. And uh, otherwise, I, well, I, I really just got here, so I haven't, I haven't mm. had a chance to notice. I guess I would have to of course, dumbly say the accent. I, I don't yep. know, right? Yeah. Are you understanding the Scottish accent? <laughs> I am, yes. I Well, I had a few friends who have kind of been uh, warming me up on uh, on chats before I came so that I could, I could understand it. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Can you do a Scottish accent? Uh, Put you maybe, on the spot. Maybe just a wee bit. I, I suppose I could try, but I, I need to practice a bit and make sure that I roll my R's so that oh, in the land yes. of the locks. Round of applause. That was very good. And it's only your first day here, so there you go. Very, very <laughs> good. You. Well, obviously, we have fans from all over that have come to see you here in Aberdeen, Aww. but how has the fan experience been so far? I think it's exciting because everyone's, you know, it's, we're back now, so. Oh, I know. It's, it's been incredible. I was really, I, I mean, COVID shut everything down, and yeah. so then didn't get to come out a lot, but I've met some amazing people so far. Um, I mean, just really cool when people bring stuff that they've had for years and years yeah. uh, and then um, are so excited. And I just, I love being parts of this because what is, uh, what is it all about but joy and, and, and having fun and you know, um, the fact that Flight of the Navigator, people still love it after all these years and showing it to their kids and now it's spanning generations is really neat and, uh, and pretty cool. I was, I was saying how some of the effects Oh, well, maybe I don't want to interrupt the question, but some of the effects in the movie were created, some of the first CGI they ever used in films, wow. and, uh, and that was generated on a computer uh, that was about as big as this whole wow. auditorium, which now would fit on our phone. So it was really neat to be involved in something like that. That's crazy to think about, yeah. yeah. Well, for, we have a lot of young fans in the audience, so if it's their first introduction to Flight of the Navigator, can you give us a rundown? So, Flight of the Navigator, it's about a 12-year-old boy. His name is David Scott Freeman. And uh, he goes to pick up his little brother from the neighbor's house. Uh, and he's going through the woods. His little brother jumps out of a tree and scares him. And then, uh, and then he ends up, his dog runs away, and he ends up falling in a ravine. And, and he gets knocked out. And when he wakes up, it's like eight years later and he goes to his home and he bangs on the door and, and strange people live there. So they found out that he was picked up by an alien spaceship, flown off for only eight hours or 4.4 solar hours, but they were traveling at the speed of light. So that meant that time slowed down on Earth. So everybody had aged and he stayed the same, the same age. So now his younger brother was his older brother and it's all about the journey of getting connected with the spaceship and meeting uh, the Trimaxian alien named Max. And uh, they go on an adventure to get David back home to his own time and back to his family. 
So you're telling me that you can slow down the aging process? <laughs> well, now we're if, talking. If I had the if I had the ship, I could technically do that. Or if you were the Flash, then you yeah. could, then you keep could a girl that posted. Post. That all the all women right. in the crowd are like, "What?" <laughs> well, since we're all friends here, if you're just joining us, everybody, hello, Joey Kramer's here. Please come up to the microphones on the left or the right. Don't be shy. Come ask a question, and we'll get right to you. But since we're all friends here, yes. we're, we're talking space. We're talking aliens, right? What are your thoughts? What are Joey Kramer's thoughts on that? Do you believe? Have you seen any? Well, I, uh, I have been actually watching a lot of really cool space documentaries and the Hubble you know, ex uh, telescopes and all that. I think that personally, I, I don't see how there couldn't be other galaxies, other worlds out there, other species, or uh, because the universe is endless, right? It's just yep. so big, and, and so... Um, yeah, we are not alone. <laughs> that got really ominous. We are not alone. Welcome, guys, if you're just joining us. Uh, I think it's a bit selfish to assume that we're just, it's just us. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's got to be something I, better I, than I mean, this. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to get too philosophical or, <laughs> it's or just too... It's us <laughs> but, and our closest but, uh, friends. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I, I mean, all the, the, the talk of trip, trips to Mars and stuff now, I just, uh, is, is pretty fantastic. And I, I mean, they've, it seems by the, by the, in my lifetime, we'll be able to, what, take a trip to the moon and... Would you do uh, it? I mean, some celebrity, I mean, Will, William Shatner did it. You know, I mean, would you be up for it? You think I, I, I think I, I think I'd like to do it for yeah. sure. I mean, who wouldn't love to go to space, right? It's, yeah. uh, it's something. I'll yes. love. Yeah. Oh, we've got a lovely gentleman over here that has a question for Mr. Kramer. Hello. All right. Hey. Hey, Joey. Hey. Um, I was just wondering. You know, nowadays when they're filming films like this with children, there's a wide range of children all that apply. Was that the case with you? And were your little brother and then your brother older, were they considered for the position of David? Or were they just looking for a child your age in that bracket? Good question. Um, good question. Okay, well, I'm not sure if, uh, if they auditioned for the role. I guess, I think, I'm guessing not because uh, Matt Adler, who played my older brother, he was a little bit older than David was, uh, or me, and younger brother would have been too young, but um, uh, I, I found out we recently released a documentary, Life After the Navigator, in which we did all sorts of really cool behind-the-scenes stuff, and I learned that they auditioned hundreds and hundreds of kids all over Canada and the U.S., uh, I think even uh, even in Europe or, or England, or um, and I fortunately got the got the part. It was um, my first starring role, and and uh, I was very grateful, and still am very grateful to have been part of it. Uh, it was uh, it was an incredible film. So uh, I I actually just found out that they auditioned uh, Chris O'Donnell uh, and Joaquin oh Phoenix God. for Whoa. the role as well. So it was pretty neat. And uh, I hadn't really been a formally trained actor. I just kind of loved uh, performing and, and having fun and imitating my favorite characters. And so that's what they really loved about, uh, about my auditions. And yeah. yeah. I was just wondering, why did you do anything after The Flight and the Navigator? Well, I did a couple of things, but uh, without going uh, too far down the rabbit hole, I think what happened was then I'd been acting from about 8 to 13, 14 there, and it started to get kind of overwhelming as a young kid. I missed a lot of school. I missed a lot of my friends. I didn't really have the normal growing up, and I just wanted to be a normal kid again and skateboard and and uh, and have fun. So I kind of stopped, and I'd always thought about getting back into film and and. Uh, it's where my passion is and what I love to do, and and uh, and now I am. I'm starting to pursue my dream again. I get to do these comic cons, but as well, I've uh, started doing some local, like independent films and stuff, and and uh, some auditions here and there. So I think uh, it'll it'll happen. Yes. Follow your dreams, and 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 everything will turn out. Thank you, Joey. <laughs> Good advice. And Thank again, you for your question. Fantastic movie. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Lovely question. Again, if you'd like to ask Joey a question, there's a microphone there and a microphone right over there. But we're talking about child acting. How was your family reacting to that and your schoolmates? I mean, how did that go for you? Um, overall, it was it was pretty good. Uh, my my mom 
uh, was always very supportive. That's how I got into acting was uh, she worked in the theater department at the University of Vancouver there. Um, and so I started in the stage plays and then some commercials and, and always very supportive. Um, my, my close friends were always supportive as well and really it was fun to go to a theater and see a movie that you were in and, yeah. and, uh, and kind of come out of there. Um, and then there was also the, the troubles of kind of being away from school and not quite fitting in when I went back to school and things like that and just, but, but overall, um, it's, it's worked out. <laughs> yes, it's got Hi. you to Aberdeen. Yeah. Hello, we've got a question right over here from a, a royal princess. Come on, Papa. Papa's aliens made. <laughs> Say that again? What's that, buddy? Papa's aliens made. How was oh, aliens how made? are the aliens Ooh, made? Okay, question. so that's a good question as well. Um, What's neat about the Navigator was that they were all like actually kind of real because they were, they were a lot of them, they were all puppets. Um, so kind of like hmm, the Muppets or Fraggle Rock or Dark Crystal. And, and so I got to actually interact with these, these creatures and uh, the Puckmarin who is uh, kind of the favorite one. He was really cool, and they had a bunch of different versions of him, so he could go in different positions, and, and I got to actually play with him. And then the other ones, there's the, the crazy alien that ate David's hat and lets out the big burp. He's like, Bleh. What did he sound like? <laughs> 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 Perfect. <laughs> Very good question. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You Give look lovely. Give this beautiful princess a round of applause. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming up and asking a question. To Mr. Joey Kramer, we've got a question right over here. Hi, Joey. Welcome to Scotland. Hey. Um, having seen Life After Navigator, which I think took an immense amount of bravery to do. Can you hear? No. Tilt. Just tilt it up a little. That better? There we go. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, having seen Life After Navigator, I think it's one of the best documentaries I've seen in a long, long time. It took a tremendous amount of bravery to, to put yourself out there and the way that you've owned everything. I think it's fantastic, and I think you deserve a massive amount of credit for that. Yes, um, Life, uh, Flight the Navigator was one of my favourite films growing up. It was always a go-to in terms of just the escapism that it provided and stuff. Mm. Having the experience that you've had now, would you have changed anything uh, in terms of would you have chosen not to do it, it with the hindsight and with the knowledge? Well, that's that's a great question. I think uh, definitely no. I wouldn't change a thing. Um, I, I feel so grateful and so fortunate to have done that movie with and 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 like I said, all the joy that it still brings people after so long. And then um, I think we all go through stuff. I mean, my life got a little bit crazier than, than maybe some, but uh, I think we can all relate to having struggles and having challenges and, uh, and then overcoming them. And I think one of the most important lessons that I've learned is that I wouldn't be where I am today and I wouldn't be the person I am today uh, without all of those experiences and without having gone through that stuff. So. Um, yeah, it's very. The documentary was very dear to my heart, and thank you so much. It was. Uh, it's. It's already helped a lot of people, which is really amazing. I get messages from people all over, and and so again, just just uh, grateful. But I think that with anything, it's it's all about living life, and we got to go through what we do to 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 be the people that we are. Uh, and it's all about the ups and downs are are everything. So. Well said. Yes. Thank you. Great question. Thank you so thank much. You. Yes, round of applause. We do have time for a few more questions, but he, he brought up a great point about escapism. So, you know, mm. movies like Harry Potter and, and Star Wars and, and things of that nature, especially during COVID, I think it's very important for people to have an outlet or to have kind of live in that fantasy world for a while. Do you, did you find yourself doing that in COVID, <laughs> having escapism in film and TV? Yeah, I... Um I, I watched I watched a lot of stuff, but I actually read quite a bit. So um, that's kind of that was my escapism. I like getting lost in a book, um, and uh, I, yeah, I read a really really cool trilogy um, over and over. It's kind of like a Lord of the Rings thing, but it's not. Um, anyway, Amazing Worlds yeah. sidetrack. But but um, the the escapism in Navigator as well was I love that people could relate to David and relate to just kind of um, 
being lost or being, you know, not fitting in and then finding their way home. And I think that was uh, what was so special about it, why people could relate. There was so much heart in the film. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, it's, it's interesting because I watched the movie recently with a, a class of young actors and I found myself just getting lost in the story of it. It almost wasn't even like watching myself. So it's pretty, pretty special to be part of something like that. But... It's crazy. It comes yeah. full circle, right? Yeah. Was it weird to watch it all these years later? Were you noticing different things? Well, I always see the little things. There's some things that people won't notice. Uh, maybe a little piece of duct tape. or yeah. uh, There's one spot in the movie where I actually... Uh, we finished filming and I went home and cut my hair and bleached it blonde because I was a really cool skater oh, kid. And, okay. and, and then we had to refilm. So there's a few scenes where I'm wearing a wig. And, uh, can you tell when you're wearing the wig? I can tell. Ah! I can tell. Most awesome. people won't notice unless I say, oh, yeah, right there, remember? Or you can kind of see the difference. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... I, uh, but overall, the story was, uh, was so neat that I just, got, I just got sucked into it. Yeah. yeah. Sign of a good film. Yes. Yeah. We do have time for a few more questions. If you're just joining us, I know everyone's passing by and enjoying the Comic-Con. We've got Joey Kramer here from Flight of the Navigator. But you mentioned um, young actors. And a lot of the people that we meet at Comic-Cons are aspiring actors, aspiring screenwriters. Um, what advice would you give to them to get started? Wow. Um, you know, I... I go back to, uh, to doing what you love and the success will follow your, um, the money or whatever. And, and always do things because you, because you, you love it. Um, you have to have passion about it. And especially acting, uh, we put ourselves out there and 99% of the time it's, it's no, you don't fit this part or no. And so uh, just... Doing, doing something because you love it. And, uh, and these days, if you want to make films, uh, whether you want to write or, or make films, just start shooting stuff on your phone. Uh, make them, have fun, and, and enjoy. And that's, uh, it's such a gift about the technology yeah. these days is that you can, you can do anything uh, with a very little amount of equipment. And, uh, but I would definitely say just do it because you love it and have fun with it because that's what it's all about. Yeah. Good advice. We've got a question right over here. Gryffindor. Should I? Should I? Just one right As I'm like, as you can tell, a bit older, how do you feel that we're showing our kids your film? I've got a seven-year-old and 11-year-old. They absolutely love it. They've never been seen it before. They absolutely think it's fantastic. And my niece is the same. How would you feel about that, knowing that you're living on? Uh, I, 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 grateful. I'm, I feel blessed. It's so incredible that people can show it to the kids. And, you know, I mean, as kids, we're, we're pretty, you know, we, we like good stuff and we're pretty, uh, cr like, critical in a good way. So we can point out things very much. We tell the truth. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, no, that was, that was yeah. no, I didn't like that or whatever. But uh, I love that. I love that parents can show it to their kids and, and the, the film still holds up. Uh, I love that uh, that a movie that I was involved in meant that much to to you that you felt like you wanted to share it with your kids, and so uh, hashtag grateful. I mean, it's all about gratitude, and and uh, and and I am very grateful. So yeah. thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you. Grateful for your question. Yes, yeah. I love the supportive clapping after someone asks a question. Yeah. We probably have time for about one more, so get those questions ready for Joey Kramer. You're mentioning social media. That was going to be my question to you. Do you think it can be helpful or harmful these days? What are your thoughts on it? Do you enjoy it? Um, so I, I think it can be both, yep. definitely. I mean, I think we all know that it can be both. I've found um, I really try and put out the positive energy and believe in the... I have faith in people. And, and from my experiences... Uh, it's really made the world smaller. It's made the world a smaller place. I've been able to connect with people all over the world and uh, make new friends. And uh, so by that, I think that it's wonderful. I also think it's a great platform to, to spread, um, you know, positivity or um, really inspiring stories and, and things that, again, just bring, bring that joy into your life. And, and uh, 
And I think with everything that goes on in the world, it's nice to be able to share those things. I, I personally try not to, well, unless I have to, I, I don't turn on my phone for at least an hour after I wake up in the morning. Um, and, uh, and, and just little things like not get, um, not get too sucked into it. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's, it's a balance, just like with everything. Moderation is, is key, so yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. It can get very addictive, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, as we are looking out over this amazing Comic-Con space, by the way, welcome everybody, if you're just joining us, to Comic-Con Aberdeen, presented by Monopoly Events. We've got Joey Kramer here from Flight of the Navigator. We have time for one more question if you guys want, but a question from me. So. The autograph panels are right over here to my left. Was there anyone that you were excited to meet in terms of like that you were fanboying over or people that you like knew in person that you were excited to see? There's a lot of people there, here today. There was. I actually just met Claudia Wells from Back to the Future. Isn't she and I, awesome? Yeah, yeah, that was incredible. I was super excited to meet her. Um, I was I grew up with uh, RoboCop and Peter Weller. Uh, Naked Lunch. I, I don't. It's kind of a rarity, but it blew my mind. Is in my twenties. Yep. So there's there's quite a few. Um, and uh, Stephen from Walking Dead and Snowpiercer, so yeah. Mog. So I, I I I love coming to these, meeting people, uh, and uh, yeah, there's there's been a couple moments I'm like, oh, do I do I say hi? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, especially if it's a favorite. It. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully you guys know that you know a lot of the actors meeting other actors, they do the same thing that we all do. You know, they fangirl, they fanboy, they freak out. Yeah. Was there anyone that you've met, maybe outside of this Comic-Con, like actor-wise, someone that you looked up to, like your celebrity encounters, anyone that really blew your mind? Um, well, I'd have to say Olivia Newton-John from Greece. Um, I grew up with Greece and absolutely loved it. And uh, yeah, Randall Kleiser, who filmed Navigator, he also directed Grease. And um, he did a film in the mid 90s called It's My Party. And so she was one of the actors on that. And I got to work behind the scenes in that film and, and got to meet and, and get to know her a little bit. That was definitely huge. Um, and uh, I mean, it's funny because I get put on the spot. I know that there's some more. That I've met, and I just can't. That's a quite pretty big that, one. But Sandy I'd from have Greece. To say, yeah. Dan was she lovely? Amazing, amazing. Yeah, well, she was incredible. The great thing is, you meet celebrities, and like 99.9% .9 of the time, they're great. But then there's a few that you meet, and they're a little. St has that ever happened to you with actors or anyone? Yeah, I'll admit, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say who no it was, goes. but. Uh, uh, there, yeah, I've met. I met one who I was the hugest fan of uh, growing up. And, uh, and it was a little bit disappointing, but you know, people have bad days or off moments or, may, you know, uh, so, right? Right. It was, it was still fun. It, yeah. was still, it was still an opportunity. It's still cool. <laughs> yeah, well, it's we're here cool. all about the positivity right yes. here in Aberdeen. We're going to let Joey get back to his table because you've got autographs to sign. You've got your yeah. legion of fans over there. But please give a warm round of applause Thank to you. Joey Kramer. <laughs> And he will later, be here navigators. all day. Yes. He's yeah. here today and tomorrow. 